Okay, hi and welcome to another DCG tutorial. So in this question we're working on 2014 paper and we're doing section A and we're doing section or question A3. So the 3D graphic below shows a tagine, which is a type of clay oven frequently used in North African cooking. The drawing on the right shows an incomplete elevation of the tagine. Uh, the upper lid is based on two semi parabolas which are inscribed in rectangles and the lower dish is based on a semi ellipse. So, ellipse and parabola question. Again, we start with part A, see how we get on. So, V1 and V2, so we have our vertices V1 and V2, are the vertices of semi parabolas. P is a point on a semi ellipse. Small portions of two of the curves have already been drawn. Complete the elevation of the gene, show clearly how the exact length of the base is obtained. Okay, so the exact length of the base. So, so what we're going to do is look at the drawing first and see what they've given to you. So they've given you the first is V1 and V2, so that's where your parabola is starting at. They've also shown you uh, basically how to do the parabola. So they've given you a horizontal line here, and they've given you your angle line up to the vertices there. And where they meet, they've given you a point on the parabola. So. If a parabola is inscribed in a rectangle, the first thing you do is divide up the height and the length into an even number of parts. So they've started that for you. So if we take that measurement, okay, so if that's one equal part, you just keep keep adding that on to get the rest of our lines, and that should all be divided up so it's divided one two three four five five equal parts do the same with the height so that might be a different measurement so get that on your compass as well or you can measure it but it's just quicker with the compass and start marking that up so one two three and then your four and your five now what we do is we repeat what was done in the question Okay, so what was done in the question was your heights were drawn across horizontally, so draw them across and the rect to the edge of the rectangle. And then your lengths are joined back to V2. So each one is joined back to V2. These will be at angles. So what's happening here now is where each individual line meets will give you a point. So the first one there met the first one, gave you a point. Second one meets the second one, gives you a point. Third one meets the third one, point. Fourth meets the fourth, there's a point. And it's inscribed in a rectangle, so that means the last point is here. So by joining those together lightly, you now have your parabola. Okay. They said then the left hand side again is the parabola. So rather than going through all that again, they are symmetrical. So if we bring the height for each point across to the left. The distance from the center, so your center line here, distance from the center line to the point will be the same from the center line to the same point over on the left hand side. So again, we're going to get the compass. We're going to put the pin, the center, the lead at our first point. And by rotating that around, we get our first point on the left hand side. Okay, so repeat the process. On the left hand side. So V1 and V2 are first is of the semi parabolas. P is the point on the semi ellipse. Small portions of the two curves have already been drawn. Complete the elevation of the decision showing clearly how the exact length of the base is obtained. Okay, so that's 
top section so let's work now on the bottom section so based on ellipse so for an ellipse you need a minor circle and a major circle if you're doing the concentric circles method which we will be and that's also what they've done here so they divided up 30 60 and they've given you a first 30 degree line where the 30 degree line hits the large circle the large uh, the major circle that was drawn straight down we hit the minor circle here so i have two points down or sorry this one goes up this one goes across and where they meet gives you a point on the ellipse so repeat the process to find the rest of the ellipse so we're going to draw that's well that's not charging right now but we'll put one in the same the far side And I'm not too sure, so it's going it's a flattened base. So I'm not too sure if we need the 60 degree line, but we'll put it in as we'll do as much of the ellipse as we need. Alright, so repeat the process where it hits the large circle, draw it up, where it hits the small circle, draw it across. Go with either so it's going from the major circle to the minor. So it's going from the major here, so the minor that's gonna be a point on the ellipse. Okay, repeat the process on the right hand side. Now the part of the question they were asking is the exact length of the base is obtained. So if the base is vertical or sorry, horizontal like this part here, we're just going to extend it. And wherever it cuts the ellipse, that is where the ellipse stops. So what they were saying was, basically if you were joining this point to randomly along that line there, you wouldn't have the exact length. What they needed was extra points on the ellipse, so you were supposed to draw the full ellipse in. Okay, so that's part A done, so let's draw that in strong before we move on to part B. Okay, so that is part A of the question done. So straightforward enough, not too long spent on that. B, draw the tangent to uh, draw a tangent to the curve at point P. So we have point B here on the ellipse. So if you need to draw a tangent to a point on the ellipse, first thing you'll need is obviously the point, which we have, and then we need focal points. So to find the focal points of an ellipse, you need the two radiuses. So we're going to get the major radius on your compass get that major axis radius all right on your compass move the pin now to the top of the minor circle okay up here and cut the center line to the left and to the right and what that will give you is focal point so this is f1 and over here then is f2 next step you join those focal points to the point of contact. So I'm just going to join them in here with a marker just so they stand out. So. And what you end up with is these angles made by those two lines. And what we want is a tangent to point P. So it's going to be line tangential to that curve. So what we need to do is bisect the angle on that side. So the line comes from F1 to P. And the line from F2 to P that's extended out, bisect this angle here. So again, you're going to use your compass. Now, there's more of a line here, so it might be easier to bisect this side. So, pin at P, bisecting an angle. So, any distance, any radius on the compass. Where it cuts both sides there, off you go again, two more arcs. This point here now is a point on the tangent, and if you join that back to point P, that will be the tangent to the curve. So we can draw that in strong. And that is part B of the question done. So there's your two parabolas. Okay, so it's inscribed in a rectangle, so you divide up the base and the height into equal parts, and the number has to be the same. So five and five not six and four or so on that has to be the same number then for the ellipse juicer stuff there uh 
bisect or divide up 30 60 and use a concentric circles method okay so i hope that helped uh, if it did please leave a like and if you'd like to see certain questions done if there's certain topics i'm not covering on the channel please let me know in the comment section okay thank you and good luck